Have you ever wondered why there aren't any eccentric millionaires out there using their money to become superheroes? Well, I may not be a millionaire yet, but Hacksmith Industries is the R&D facility capable of, well, outfitting a superhero. So I think it's about time that I use my own resources to augment my own mortal abilities. It's time to build my very own Winter Soldier arm. This video is sponsored by Marvel Contest of Champions. Use my link below before July 1st to get both the Winter Soldier and Falcon for free. So how exactly am I going to build an armored, overpowered bionic arm? Well, I guess the first step is to cut off my arm. Dave? All right, not going to do that. So I guess the question is, how can I turn my regular arm into a bionic augmented arm using maybe nanotech? Nah. Nanotech really isn't anything like it's shown in the movies, sadly. Well, we could try and make some kind of exoskeleton, like we've done in the past. Whether we use pneumatic cylinders like my original Elysium exoskeleton, hydraulics like our power loader project, or maybe even pneumatic muscles like the exo arm we made last summer. But they were all pretty bulky. It'd be fine if I didn't have an arm inside, but there's no way we can make it as compact as a Winter Soldier's arm, since it's basically the same size as a regular, well, muscular arm. So I think for this project, we'll focus on making a flexible armor for my normal arm. He does a ton of cool stuff with his arm that isn't really based on strength, like blocking bullets, swords, grabbing the ground to slow down while making sparks from his fingertips. Imagine what you could do if you couldn't hurt your arm. Uh, uh, all right, Bogdan, did it. All right, I've always wanted to try this. Chainsaw fight! All right, let's try this again, but slowly. All right, let's see what happens. Do it. <laughs> that would be fun. All right, daydreaming is fun, but how can we actually do this in reality? Well, in engineering school, there's a subject called material science. And it might sound kind of boring, but it's actually a really quite interesting course. It focuses on learning about different materials and their properties in order to use them for your advantage. So I think the first step is to research the materials we want to use for my arm. And for this episode of Make It Real, I think we should kick it old school. No computers or fancy equipment allowed. Let's use pencil and paper. All right, so to make this arm, I think we're gonna have to use multiple layers for maximum strength, basically creating a composite armor for my arm. So I think layer one is going to have to be padding. We're gonna need to use some kind of foam um, something with some impact resistance. There's a few different things we could use, just normal foam, D3O foam, you could use like rubber, maybe neoprene, something like that. And then layer number two, we'll need some kind of abrasion resistant material to protect the padding. So I think for the abrasion resistant material, we're gonna have to use some kind of aramid fiber, maybe like Kevlar or Dyneema or some kind of fiberglass. So I think layer three is where we start really layering up the composite armor of this. So I think I'm gonna to wanna to add some titanium because titanium is the same strength as steel, but half the weight. So why don't we put in some titanium bars to really protect my arm. And we might even also use some kind of, uh, again, some kind of fiber or composite over top of that titanium. Something like that. Finally, we have layer four. This is the external layer of armor for my arm. So again, it needs to be abrasion resistant and durable. So I think for this layer, it's going to be another Kevlar or aramid fiber sleeve on top and then we're actually going to coat the entire thing in some kind of rubberized polymer for both abrasion resistance and a bit more of that padding and hopefully make it more durable 
than just the aramid fiber sleeve. Then hopefully we can use a, different, a few different colors of this rubberized coating to give the arm some of that detail that you see in the game. And of course, I think we're gonna draw a little Hacksmith logo. Let's see how well I can draw it. And I think that sums up the design for our Winter Soldier arm. So let's get some of these materials together and decide what we're actually gonna make it out of. Then we just have to put it together. I've gathered all the supplies I think I need to build our Winter Soldier arm. Let's start with the base layer. Now, I've got a few different aramid fiber composites available. I've got some Dyneema fabric. I've got some Kevlar fabric. I have some fiberglass matting. And I even have a water-activated kind of carbon fiber tape. Plus, I also have this Kevlar cut-proof sleeve. Now, it is a bit short. The nice thing is, they actually sell it by the roll. Now the question is, how am I going to attach this to my shoulder? Well, I've actually gotten a whole bunch of shoulder braces because I figure we could use that to attach the arm to my body. But then I started thinking, we also need a layer of padding. So what if we actually used a half body wetsuit? You see, this is already five millimeters of neoprene foam, which also acts as padding. Plus it rigidly connects to the rest of my body. So I think this might actually work better than the shoulder braces. We'll use the wetsuit both as a base layer that connects to my body as well as our layer of padding. Then we'll have a layer of Kevlar sleeve for the first layer of protection. We can add in some composite materials like titanium to provide more protection for my arm. Then we'll go back to another layer of Kevlar and this time we're actually going to coat it in a rubber polymer. Now I've actually tested a whole bunch of different consumer available rubber spray on paints and I think paint number seven did the trick. It's still kind of flexible, but it's also very durable. As you can see, it's tight, but it's still flexible. So I think that'll provide the whole arm with really good abrasive properties. A little tight. And then we can finish it off with some of this detail spray to give it a bit of a gray shine, just like the Winter Soldier arm. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned yet is what do we do about the hand? How am I gonna protect my fingies? Well, we have Kevlar cut resistant gloves, but it's cut resistant, not cut proof. So I actually went and I picked up a chainmail glove. And the combination of both this Kevlar and chainmail means my hand is virtually indestructible. All right, I think I know how we're gonna build it now. But building it on my arm might be a bit tricky because I kind of need to use my hand. I think I need a body double. Now, if you've been following my vlog channel, you'll know that I recently came into possession of quite a few mannequins. <sighs> Let's see if we can find one that's approximately my body size. Now, apparently mannequins are supposed to be the perfect ideal body type, or at least that's what clothing stores want us to believe. So let's prepare to be disappointed. Damn, now that is one fashionable mannequin outfitted from Hacksmith.store. For the latest fashions and trends, make sure you check out Hacksmith.store. That's Hacksmith.store. All right, so I've got about a 40, 40 and a half inch chest. Let's see if we can find a mannequin that's the same size as me. Nope, too small. Closer. All right, what about this guy? Perfect. All right, we can use this guy's chest. Looking at about 14 and a half, 15. All right, got quite a few arms in here. Nope, too small. All right, this one's gotta be too big, right? Right? Too small? I mean, to be fair, I guess these mannequins aren't flexing, but it's important that we find an arm that's as big as me flexing because we want the arm to fit when I flex, right? Try the other bin. 13, 13, 13. That's way too small. All right, what about this one? Huh, still a bit smaller, but that's probably the closest I've found so far. 
I might want to add some padding to make this arm a bit bigger because when we build the armor over top of this, we want it to be a bit bigger than my actual arm to make sure I have flexibility so when I'm wearing it, it's not stopping my mobility. But I think this might work. Let's try it. All right, so I've padded the mannequin's arm to make it a bit bigger. Let's start by putting the wetsuit onto the mannequin and see if this is actually going to work. Zip them up. It's on there. Let's see if the Kevlar sleeve fits over top. All right, we're gonna use a much longer piece of this. And what we're going to have to do is sew it onto the cuff and figure out how we're actually going to attach it to the wetsuit up here as well. So I think that's our next challenge. It magically catches the other string somehow. All right, now I haven't actually done much sewing. In fact, I only just bought the sewing machine, so please forgive me if it doesn't look like I know what I'm doing because I don't really know what I'm doing. But let's give it a shot. Terrible. All right, definitely not my best work, but at least it will keep Kevlar on the cuff. And I think that's all we really need right now. So now we need to take a look at the other end. Uh, how we're going to connect it up more at the collar. How's that look? In the right place? That went a bit better. So the stitch I'm doing is flexible, which is good because we don't want to lose that flexibility. So I think I can go ahead and sew this down as well. All right, look at that. Woo. That's not that bad. All right, so that's the base aramid fiber layer uh, using cut-proof Kevlar. Now I want to attach some titanium bars to kind of protect my forearm. And we want to do a few of them kind of around it like that. So I think step one is to cut this titanium in half. I love cutting titanium because of the bright white sparks it makes. It's really cool. Gonna clean those up with the other grinder. Whoa! Come look at this. So when you sandblast titanium, it actually makes sparks. I did not know that before today. That is really cool. turned out quite well. We're going to apply the first layer of our rubber composite onto our Winter Soldier arm. I don't want to go too thick with it because we still want this layer to be quite flexible. While we wait for that to dry, let's start working on the costume. Now, I want this costume to be functional. So I think that means we're gonna use more Kevlar. This video is sponsored by Marvel Contest of Champions. Marvel Contest of Champions is one of my favorite mobile games. It's also one of the longest running and most popular Marvel fighting games out there. So far, we've made Civil Warrior Shield, which actually works, and a terrifying Morning Star. You can collect over 200 champions from your favorite Avengers, X-Men, or even Guardians. There are characters spanning more than 80 years of Marvel history. It's specifically designed for mobile, and you can compete against some of the best players in the world to become the ultimate champion. With millions of players already playing, what are you waiting for? Download Marvel Contest of Champions today, before July 1st, and you'll automatically receive both the Falcon and the Winter Soldier for free. Big thank you to Marvel Contest of Champions for sponsoring this video. Luckily, the Winter Soldier in Marvel Contest of Champions has a relatively simple costume, all things considered. 
So it looks like he's wearing a pair of jeans. So I've actually gone ahead and picked up this really nice pair of motorcycle pants. And the neat thing with these pants is they're actually made using aramid fibers throughout for extra durability and abrasion resistance. They also have Kevlar panels in some of the high wear areas like the knees and the butt, which means it's gonna be practical and functional. I also picked up this blue mil-spec shirt to try and match the costume. And since we're cutting one of the arms off, it doesn't really matter that much. But the interesting thing with his costume is he's kind of got this rifleman style military vest on. And I think since we're trying to make this costume actually functional and practical, we should focus our efforts on making this actually bulletproof. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I don't actually know how to sew. In fact, I only just picked up the sewing machine a few weeks ago. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see I've only just started messing around with it. So how exactly do you make bullet-resistant fabric? And the answer is in composites. Basically, you want multiple layers of fabric. Take this piece of paper, for example. By itself, it's pretty weak. You can stab right through it, no problem. But if you have a whole bunch of layers of paper, the knife goes in, but it does get stopped. This is the same concept of making bulletproof armor. Basically, if you can have many layers of a very durable material, such as Kevlar or another aramid fiber, you can actually prevent a knife or a bullet from penetrating the fabric. So the big question for making useful armor is, how many layers of material do we need and what kind of material? Because this is going to decide whether or not it's light enough to wear and strong enough to protect you. Like the sleeve of the material, I've actually got some Kevlar, and Kevlar is used in most bulletproof fabrics. And that's because it's a very strong type of fiber and it's very tightly woven, which makes it very good for stopping things like knives and bullets. Now, as one of my first sewing projects, I actually tried making a panel of Kevlar for this costume. And we decided to go test it as well. So while we were shooting our Mandalorian armor test scene to see if it was bulletproof, I thought, why not also try the composite I made for the Winter Soldier costume? Let's see what happens. <laughs> Clear? Clear. Alright, let's go take a look. You can, you can definitely see the damage in the nylon. That's pretty good. I think one got through. Alright, so it mostly stopped the shotgun. Let's see what a 22 does. Take another shot. Right here. The bolt there? Oh my god. I think he had found it. Yeah, that went straight through. Oh! It did deform the lead a decent bit, but not really. Okay, I'm curious though. This is only four layers of Kevlar, so let's try doubling it up to eight layers and see if that stops it. Too sure. Definitely moved a lot. Let's see. There's still only one hole. It worked. Is that? Oh! Look at that. The first layer caught it this time. But I guess it's because the second layer kind of like. Stand off. Yeah. Literally all the way through. But look, then it was maybe one or two layers. So that means six layers might actually be enough to stop a 22. All right, that was freaking cool. Not bad for my first attempt at making a bullet resistant fabric. I mean, it stopped the shotgun pretty good and it even stopped the 22 rounds when we doubled it up. And I think we hit the sweet spot of about six layers to be 22 proof. Um, Cause as you can see, it actually caught the bullet here. Uh, it did go into the next layers, which you can see right there, but it was stopped. And check this out. You can hear the, uh, the buckshot inside the fabric. So I'm actually gonna cut this open and see if we can see the insides. Yeah, look at that. That is pretty cool. So basically the buckshot was stopped by the first few layers of Kevlar. And that's just thanks to the material properties of Kevlar. Well, I can't use this for the costume, so that means I'm gonna have to make another one.
All right, so our first layer of rubber has dried. I actually went back and I added another layer of Kevlar over top so it would actually bond together. And now these two are one, which means it's time to do our top coat. And for the top coat, I wanna do a kind of gray color because that's what Winter Soldier's arm looks like. So I'm gonna try and mix white with black and I'm hoping to get gray. Let's see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna start down here because I wanna bond these two layers of Kevlar together at the seam. You know how he's got the star on his arm. I think we need a Hacksmith patch from Hacksmith.store. All right, that looks pretty good. If you guys want your own patch, check out hacksmith.store. Now, there's a bit more detail work to do. I wanna do some black lines around the edge of the arm, so it really looks just like the arm from the game. But then, that means it's ready to test. So we had an awesome test lined up to really see what this Winter Soldier arm can do. Unfortunately, even the best laid plans sometimes don't work out. While filming another video, I actually broke my left hand. And while the Winter Soldier arm is on my right hand, I just don't feel comfortable doing some of the epic things I was planning on doing, like smashing through this wall, breaking all those appliances over there. We were gonna break things off of my arm. We we're gonna do some crazy stuff outside where I actually slow myself down by like grabbing the ground. So anyway, we're actually gonna cut this video short and we're gonna do a dedicated test video for the Winter Soldier arm once I'm all healed up and ready to don the suit to test it. Anyway, big thank you to Marvel Contest of Champions for sponsoring this video. Use my link below to try the game today and you'll get a free Falcon and Winter Soldier. Make sure you subscribe to our channel with notifications turned on because you're not going to want to miss this test. I just got to hurry up and heal. You don't want to miss it.